Hello and welcome to the vlog. It is an absolutely stunning, beautiful day. Clear blue skies, warm sunshine. The air is a little chilly, but the day is lovely. We've had several of these in succession. Makes you want to go out cruising. But before I start doing any cruising this year, there are many, many jobs to do on the boat. There are always thousands of jobs to do on the boat. It is never ending. And I want to get some of them sorted before I do any cruising this year. So in this vlog, I'm going to go over stuff that needs to be done. Firstly, a really simple chore, ridding the roof of leaves and muck, all of which manages to hide in every corner and crevice. The channel down both sides of the boat is usually crammed with debris, but I've swept it clean. That was easy. Now for some bigger tasks. On the face of it, the boat looks fine, but truth be told, the paintwork is a little dull and lacking in lustre. A good wash and polish is definitely in order, using wildlife-friendly products, of course. One big source of distress is the stove. Even though I only burn coal, not wood, there's lots of muck that spews out of the chimney, as you can see. It's not quite the beacon of shininess that it was when new anymore. Somehow, all that crud dribbles down the side and marks the top paintwork. So that's going to need to have a good going over, once the stove is finally put out for spring. Annoyingly, some of the gunge even manages to jump the side rail and dribble down the side of the boat, leaving this milky mark. I don't yet know how I'm going to get rid of it. Further back, the crud gets washed along the roof by the rain and emerges at the gap in the side rail by the hatch. You guessed it, this then dribbles down the boat again, leaving this grotty brown stain which is most unappealing. I'm hopeful there's a simple boaty product that can get this off. Again, the boat looks fine as a whole. It's just when you peer close up that you spot things that need a little TLC. For example, between the first two windows are these odd marks in the paint. I've no idea what they are. A clue, perhaps, from similar marks further along, where the fender rope has swept back and forth, apparently leaving a trail. Let's look at the roof. Pretty decent. I remember seeing some horrid rusty roofs when I went boat shopping three years ago, and mine is in good nick. But again, there are some peculiar marks where the paint has rubbed or scrubbed. I've no idea how these came into being, perhaps from the rubber on the sole of my shoes or something? I just said the roof isn't rusty, and that's by and large true, but there are some really annoying little spots which are starting to blister up. Presumably, these are caused by stone chips as I've walked along the roof, usually when working the locks, which is inevitable on a narrowboat. They're tiny, but there are a smattering of them, so I need to get the sander out, rub them back, use a rust treatment, prime and paint. They do look horrid if you go close up, but they are tiny and the roof is 4mm thick steel. A more irritating little rust spot is on the side hatch where it opens to the roof. It's just more visible than the others, but the treatment will be the same. Sand, treat, prime and paint. This odd spot is one I did three years ago and yes, it is the wrong colour, as I didn't have the right stuff, but crucially, it hasn't rusted through since, so I must have done something right. And while I'm having a go at rust treatment, the end of the tiller could do with a cuddle, though it's not visible when travelling. Where the cratch cover wraps around the corner here is a perennial irritant, as the canvas repeatedly rubs away the paint. I've forgotten how many times I've repainted this already, but it always returns. And finally, let's have a look at the well deck gunnels, probably the most hard hit part of the boat, and although muddy, they are in good nick. I've treated these several times with rust treatment and black hammerite, and that seems to be doing the job. It might sound overall like there's a lot to do, rust and paint wise, but in narrowboat terms, this is just normal everyday stuff. Of course, it's not just the outside of the boat that needs a few spring cleaning touches. There are also several little jobs in the boat as well. Firstly, these vents in the bow doors. Made of brass, I think, and they become all grotty remarkably quickly, 
though it's nothing that a bottle of Brasso and a few minutes' hard rubbing won't solve. Visit any single-glazed narrowboat, and the wooden window surrounds will inevitably show signs of water damage. In winter, condensation forms on the glass, especially overnight, and dribbles down to the wood below. Here in my saloon, this one's escaped relatively unharmed, but on the opposite side, there's the telltale marking of damaged varnish, despite my morning ritual of mopping up the damp. Friends have suggested stick-on tertiary glazing for winter, but I'm ashamed to say I've never got round to it. There's another small patch in the corner of the kitchen window. I presume sanding and wood filler will suffice here. The further towards the colder back end of the boat you go, the more pronounced the issue becomes. In the bathroom, the wooden porthole surround is made in several parts, and the bottom one has come unstuck slightly, as well as the varnish fading. A bit of flexible glue, a bit of sanding, and this should come up a treat. I've already done some simple jobs this month. The towel rail was wobbly, so I've put better screws in the fixings and tightened it all up, which was an easy fix. Next to the shower, the knob that starts the whale gulper pump sucking out the wastewater was wobbly too, so I got a hand behind it and tightened up the screw threads which hold it in place. Now you can push and pull that knob without it feeling like it's going to fall off. Doing this meant for the first time taking off this panel on the side of the shower, which gives access to the water pipes. Thankfully, everything was totally dry and dusty behind there, as it should be. Come with me now into the bedroom, and I've installed new overhead reading lights. Cheapies from Amazon, I'll leave a link in the description below, these can actually point where you want them and give a focused beam, where the previous lights were a bit like those on an aeroplane, with quite a broad beam and minimal movement. The only thing I've noticed is that these do get quite hot after a while, so I'm keeping an eye on them for the moment. Another job I've done involves the fridge, and it's a bit of an experiment. Obviously, fridges suck the heat out of what's in them, and then have to expel that heat, which is done through this grill on the back. For this to work, you need airflow, and I've seen many people suggest a vent into the bilge is a great way to let cold air up behind the fridge, and give it less work to do, so drawing less power. So I took a 70mm hole saw and cut two holes in the floor, always slightly alarming drilling into the floor of the boat, even though the base plate is some inches further down. I lined the holes with cheap plastic vents which just push into place, and you can certainly feel the cooler air coming up. Down there, that's my bilge and the real bottom of the boat. You can just make out the breeze block ballast too. I'm now wondering if I should make similar vents directly above the back of the fridge on the worktop too, but for the moment the hotter air escapes where it always did, along the top and out of the front. It may be my imagination, but the fridge does seem to be coming on less often. Time will tell. Other than those issues, which I think it's fair to say you'd find on any boat other than a brand new one, everything is looking pretty shipshape. Of course, the trouble is that now the weather is so fine, I don't actually fancy getting on with any DIY. I just want to sit out and enjoy the canals. But they will get done, eventually. It's canal time, after all. That's it for this one. Thanks very much for watching. Bye-bye. <laughs>